Yo. Hello. Today I'm reacting to YouTubers wearing luxury watches, episode 646. As we're gonna make a video about YouTubers, you should YouTube subscribe here right now, right on the button, subscribe. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh. Peter McKinnon. Peter and I are BFFs, like, we're like proper BFFs. So we send each other um, erotic images. You know that he has an absolutely insane collection, like, so basically this is cheating because I know which watches he owns. So I'm gonna be surprised if there's a watch that I do not know that they had. Number four. <laughs> SKX, SKX 007. Why am I recommending this? Why do I like it? I'm a watch guy, I love watches. For 300 bucks for an automatic watch, these are dope. That would make a great gift for someone that you love. Not just like, like's not good enough, love. You know that there's an entire like SKX movement. People buy in the SKX and mod and put all sorts of different bezels, bracelets, dials. People just buy all sorts of weird shit and put it on and Make it their own, it's really, really cool. This is a real watch enthusiastic type of watch. Really cool start. Funny thing is, I actually didn't expect him to have that watch. I'm like, yeah, I probably know his entire collection. Didn't know that one, fair enough. I'll take that one on the chin. You don't take that on the chin. I think it's time to sit down and go through which ones are worth keeping, which ones I use, which ones I don't, what I'm gonna sell, and uh, don't mind if I just set these down because this is a disaster, most certainly waiting to happen. That is cool. That is really, really cool. I didn't expect that at all because I didn't know that he had this watch either. This is the Omega Seamaster made in full titanium. This is the James Bond variant for the new James Bond movie, which we're all still waiting for. I had this watch in my personal collection, but after wearing it two, three times, I just couldn't get used to the fact it was so f***ing light. Really good looking watch though. I really like the dial. This watch is worth between 10 and 11 thousand dollars fair play i know he has a lot of nice rolexes like so i hope to see them like pete's pirate life what is that this is his second instagram account that's a really cool watch this is the new rolex submariner 41 millimeter reference number 126613lb with the blue sun burst dial absolute cracker of a watch this beast here marks some hard won successes in otherwise a very difficult year. Peter is an absolute purist, a proper watch collector. He really puts sentimental value behind a watch. I mean, he's marking a very difficult year with this watch. He absolutely loves watches. I know that of conversations that we've had, but seeing stuff like this publicly, that is just so cool. Years, memories, achievements. He attaches that to a watch and he will be reminded every time he wears this watch. What's up, Nico? Uh, thanks for including me in your video. There's one detail that you actually missed with regarding the new 41 millimeter sub. This is uh, one of my probably most favorite pieces of all the watches I have for several reasons. There's also a little something special on the inside. I engraved the back of this Rolex, which I'd never done before. I figured I'd show you. I've never shown anybody this. This is the first time anyone's seeing it, but yeah, F 2020. I think we can all agree on that. Cheers, buddy. It's not about how expensive your watch is, it's about what that watch tells you. What's the story of your watch? I am so proud that I can bring other people on that journey with me. Be a part of a story, be part of a watch when we sell a watch. I think it's the coolest thing ever. I have the best job in the world, like. Have you ever sold Peter a watch? Not yet, but that is gonna happen. Very soon, Peter. Here, this is what I mean, Bretling. The versatility in his watch collection is just nuts. From a Wii Seiko to G-Shocks, Omega Seamaster, to now a rubber strap Bretling monster, because this thing is big. It's very hard to see which exact model of the Avenger this actually is. From photos, I would guess it's the Bretling Avenger 45 Night Vision, which is a value between six and seven thousand dollars. He could pull this off like, I can't pull, pull this off. I don't have cool tattoos and shit. Sometimes you just gotta take 30 and bang out a savage flat lay. No idea what you mean, but that is a really nice watch. That's a mid 80s Rolex day date. And I didn't know he had that one either. In solid 18 karat yellow gold with the champagne dial. That is the exact same version that Tony Soprano wears in the Sopranos. I'm just wondering what the rest of this shit is. There's a ring, there's a pen, there's a knife. You could use this as like a f***ing butt plug. 
what the f is that? Like it looks like a f thing that you can screw down in your, depending what comes with this watch, depending on the set and depending on the condition, this watch is valued between 16 and $19,000. Oh, funny thing is, I bought my dad a vintage 1985 Day-Date. He actually sent me that message. I'm not very good at replying to DMs. <laughs> Open it. These are apparently going to be maybe even harder to get than the All Black. Entered a raffle. Did you? Just the other night. Looks like I won. <laughs> <laughs> We're twinsies. Cheers. Oh, this is not sponsored, by the way, by G-Shock, but they did send us these watches to give to my, my friends and crew, so thank you, G-Shock. Very much appreciated. Ever since I talked about Casio, G-Shock being god tier, everyone is getting free f***ing Casios, except f***ing me. They're forgetting about us. Casio, get your sh** in order. Give me one of those watches. Give me three, because there's two people here as well. So, sort it out, please. Love that G-Shock, though. God shock. God tier watches. He even got the Tote G-Shock. Tote? It's like a UFO sized machine on your wrist with like a million colors. To be fair, he did pay a premium for that watch. It looks horrible like. I don't have nice things. Casey Neistat, that was one of the first YouTubers I ever reviewed. Why does he wear sunglasses? That's just his thing. Are these special? What is this? Did you actually make this? This is not real, Ray-Ban, <laughs> I may hope. Right. Alrighty then. I don't have nice things because I break everything. The one exception to this is the fact that I wear like this ridiculous Rolex. So this is a lovely Rolex Datejust. It looks like a 116234 with a domed bezel, so not with a fluted bezel. And he put a rubber strap on there. My in-laws, that is Candace's parents, got it for me as a wedding present. Very generous of them. You're not only stealing their daughter, but they also give you a Rolex with it. They really want to get rid of her, like. And thinking to myself, this is the nicest thing I've ever seen. I can never wear this. And Candace came to me and she's like, you're gonna offend my parents. And I was just like, look, I will just destroy it. This is my watch. I mean, it's God shock, mate. It's God shock. It's God tier. A watch that's literally sold to people because it's unbreakable. It's not unbreakable. I have proof of that. <laughs> You want some baked strap? So all sorts of things. And Candace gets for me, like G-Shock-esque band. I really can't break a rubber band. And all of a sudden, what was once way too precious for me becomes a fairly practical wristwatch. I need it in white. I want it to look like this. I want it to be all dirty and f***ed up looking and gross. Ooh. This is awesome. I do really like it on a white strap, to be honest. But Casey, let me make a point here, right? Your watch, the Rolex, is absolutely indestructible. On the Oyster bracelet, you'll still not be able to destroy it. That watch is built to resist things that you can't even replicate. I like it on a rubber strap. Please wear it as well on the Oyster bracelet because that's how that watch should look. Since I moved to California, I have a policy. I don't keep a schedule. It's the most <laughs> awful punishing thing for everyone in the world but me. Yeah, I refuse to keep a schedule and I refuse to schedule phone calls. Has is that... it because you live in Los Angeles now? That is so funny. I do not have a calendar, neither a schedule. It is pointless. I'm always late. Did you know that show that Casey was on? Oh, it's impulsive. It's, it's impulsive. called impulsive. It's Logan Paul's podcast. Was it Logan Paul? No, I see. Yeah, that is Logan Paul. I would, I would love to be in a podcast and talk about watches and teach someone something about watches. Yeah, I'm conversing guaranteed. I got the word from Adams down to Pico. This is sequel. You ain't know this. <laughs> I feel like a straight like boxer out of the 1920s. Just look and put him up, pal. <laughs> gonna too. Hey, good luck, boys. <laughs> KSI won this fight, right? It's cool to see that he still wears the Platinum Day Date, which he says he paid $40,000 for. Just drop 40 k on a presidential Rolex. That watch is now worth double now. F***ing cracker. Really, really good watch. In the last couple of videos, I've been wearing some of our Richard Millets. I don't f***ing like them. It looks like f***ing toys. I'd rather wear this. This is a Rolex Day, just 16233. If I think about a Rolex, I think about this. This is probably the most affordable and best value for money Rolex you can buy. You buy something like this in and about the $6,000 and I will pick this Rolex day just all day every day above a Richard Millet. And this is by the way, a Richard Millet RM11, the limited edition Philippe Massa. A watch that is valued between 220 and $260,000. Who are these people? This is George and Mike. 
They're the other hosts of Impulsive. Who's George and Mike? George Janko and Mike Maylack. I like the dog. The dog is quite funny, like. My dog's called Kong. Kong is dead. Is Kong dead? What did they do with Kong? They fed him to the coyotes. What a bad! How the f do you get eaten by coyotes? I will have 10 minutes of silence for Kong. Kong looks the dog's bollocks. One dead dog, two bollocks. <laughs> that is f heartbreaking. I have the two most amazing border collies. Don't rub it in. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not rubbing it in. I have the two most loving collies in the world. And if something happens to them, I am f***ing gone. Like, who's this guy on the left? He's wearing some f***ing shit Michael Kors stuff. It's George. George, you're watching shit. Go find a better job so you can buy a better watch. Did you see Andrew Ray uh, binging with Bobby's with his new watch? Did you see it? What did he buy? He got himself the new Batman with the Jubilee bracelet from, of course, give me my sign, from Pride and Pinion. Let's start with a really very quick and easy shortbread. It's nice. Looks really, really nice on him. The cool thing is he's always wearing this blue shirt and a black cape or whatever you call that thing. Apron. It matches the watch perfectly. Now I understand why I wanted the Batman on the Jubilee Bryce and not the Pepsi. I prefer the Pepsi though. I had that watch in my hands. I did things with that watch that Andrew doesn't know about. <laughs> Have you fixed his watch with a fake dial yet? But that was it. <laughs> and I won it and I was like, oh, I just bought this Rolex. That's fake. What is your suggested course of action? So I'm gonna completely restore that watch for you in original condition. No, not yet. We're actually collecting it next week and then we're gonna document everything and we're gonna restore that watch and I can't f wait. You never have that when you take a shit and you feel that the spice that you ate comes, the same spiciness comes out. Mate, that burnt my f***ing arsehole. Spicy food burns my f***ing arsehole, can't sit for a week.